As frontier boomtowns go, Ilakaka is among the world's wildest, impermanent and lawless. Since sapphires were discovered in Alakaka in 1998, the place has gone from 60 people to 60,000 people, a boom town, just out of control and growing like a weed. And for the town's hungry gem dealers, every day is a hustle. So before Ron and the team buy anything that even resembles a gem, they want to get a first-hand look at the quality of gemstones coming out of the local mines. The sapphire fields of Alakaka fan out across thousands of square miles and produce 50% of the world's supply. Life in these mines can be a place of life-changing fortunes or violence and hardship. Seeing it brings a whole new dimension to a stone's true worth. Everybody that, that buys a stone should probably understand where it comes from. Indeed, I think that, you know, you have to understand this is the source here, and it is very primitive, very hard work. They're obviously washing the stones very, very primitively. They're trying to see sapphires will, uh, will be dropping out. Because sapphires are much heavier, so they're knocking out all the big stones and looking for what remains. So this is the business model. And so you're seeing uh, 30, 40 percent of the world's sapphires coming out of Madagascar done this way, by hand. This is why gemstones are so rare. Sapphires originally formed at depths of 50 to 60 miles underground. And it's taken 15 million years for erosion to bring them to the surface. And 15 men digging by hand, and another five men to wash the gravel clean, typically only have these little gems to show for every yard of earth they excavate. But it is a good living. All right, these men are making three times the national wage. And, uh, and actually, and if they find a big stone, they get a cut of that as well. Two or three of those is all they're really expecting. The weight of this is almost, you know, you, you don't expect a hell of a lot more weight to come out of a square meter. You want better stones, but this is, this is already a gram, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's already a gram, and they're, and a gram and a half is commercial, so. You know, big stones are very rare. Every people, they think, oh, there is big stones that come out of the mining every day, no. Yeah. Most of the mining everywhere, most of the production is very small. Yeah. Very tiny. The big stone is the cherry on the cake, you know? Yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah. And, and crazily rare. So a big stone is so, so rare. It's taken Ron, Bernie, and Diane two days and hundreds of miles to prepare for their first gem deal. One million, two million, three million. But there are still million. two currencies circulating in Madagascar. Seven, eight, nine, ten. So any confusion will be costly. If you're talking Ariari, -ari, you half it and take off three zeros. But if you're an FMJ. Okay, then I double it. Oh, God. There's going to be problems. The process of, of gem buying, you have to be very confident, almost overconfident. And so once you're, you know, rattled by the money, once you get rattled, it becomes a strategy. The, the mob feels it. This much money invites trouble. Day. Hey, 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 all right, finished, finished, finished. And night. Watch the cars, for God's sakes. I hope the drivers are watching the cars. Whoa, whoa, whoa. But with any luck, a tiny rock can turn into a small fortune. No, it's too flat, too purple. You can't cut it. The local dealers know that the hunters will use all their skills to get the best price. Oh, this is going to go dark. And Ron, Bernie, and Diane know that at some point, someone will try and trick them into buying a fake stone. No, 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 Stop it. No more. No more. The sellers are beginning to crowd the table. This is when Alakaka becomes dangerous. If they can distract the hunters, grab something, hurry them, mistakes happen. It can be a risky thing to face. Yeah, well, we have to sort of uh, relax a little. Everybody's pressing the table, you know, the, the, the chaos is starting to rise and the security is breaking down. Mobs are tough, so I'm sensitive of when things are going awry. And I know when people get together, they don't usually have spontaneous uh, acts of altruism. You know, I'm just not afraid. If I was afraid, they could tell. I'm not afraid. This is f***ed up. Hey, hey, all right, finished, finished, finished. We're going to finish. No more, OK? Oh. After the mob cools down, Bernie scores in his hunt for blue sapphires. 
I want to do more business with you, so I'll give you your price. Yes, okay. I give you right, okay? Oh, oh, no. okay? Yes, yes. Okay. And you well bring done, no, Maybe no, you find some more, huh? Bernie, Bernie, okay, don't okay. flash too much. Of that cash. Yeah. Okay, 100. Bernie's mission is off to a good start at $250 for eight grams of blue sapphire. Okay. And once he's cut and polished them, he may stand to make 7,000 US dollars. With the gem hunters buying, anyone who is desperate enough to be peddling fake stones will now try to cheat them. Yeah, this is a fake. See how beautiful this is? Look this is glass. Color. This is glass, you see? This is the VIX bottle. If you pick up a piece of glass, it'll feel warm to your hand right away because it doesn't have a crystalline structure. This is garnet. And so it Schmitt. doesn't transmit Schmitt. heat as well. Whereas a crystalline substance feels cold right away. I'm real nervous about this I, one, Bernie. Yes, it doesn't have yeah. too good. I don't like this. I don't like this. I think this is synthetic. A well-made synthetic can be almost indistinguishable from the real thing. Look at this, look at this, look at this, look at this, see? Yeah. That's too perfect. It takes years of experience to know a good stone from a bad. But Ron and the team still have to constantly guard against being duped. No, no. Schmidt. It's really contextual, right? Why is this guy selling? Uh, you know, he looks like he doesn't have rice, enough rice for the end of the day, and he happens to have this unbelievable stone. I mean, is this scientific? So you're, you're using much more psychology, much more uh, 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 understanding of behavior and, uh, and, and small indications. Gem buying is almost like playing poker. You really have to keep a straight face. When she put that bag of pink sapphires on the table and I saw that, I knew that those were the sapphires I wanted. But when you look at them all together, the colors are so pretty. The blues, the purples, the pinks. Actually, I think this package is all right. But the price has got to be right, eh? Okay. What is it? Oui, Mido. Arrête. Comment ça va? Buzz all that move. That's what I'm telling you. Buzz all that move. White guy, no money. You can't get too excited when you first see a great stone, because, of course, then that's going to just elevate the price. You know what I'm going to do? I think I'll give her two and a half at the end of the day. After years in the gem two. business, Ron knows that it pays in the long run to look after a dealer who is not trying to sell you fakes. If we gave her $300, it'd be good. I'm trying to get for two. She's turning two down. <laughs> and a little charm goes a long way to meeting in the middle. Wait, I don't know why we're Wait, whispering. I don't know why we're whispering either. It's very. <laughs> I'm a little sweet on. I said I noticed that Ron never whispers yeah, to yeah. the men. <laughs> it's always good for a 10% discount. <laughs> <laughs> okay, come here with me. I do think I might have just agreed to the deal. <laughs>